Welcome back, everybody, to part two of the DIY resin transfer molding video. Take build stuff. This time, we're gonna make the parts mostly hollow. To make this work, our setup will be pretty much the same with the resin in the pressure pot. We'll have the inlet tube and the exhaust slash outlet tube uh, in the same spots. This uh, section, the airfoil section here, will still end up being solid. And that's mainly just because the part is so thin there. It would have taken a bit more preparation with the tooling to uh, make that hollow. So for the hollow section, we're gonna have an internal bladder or to fill the bulk of the cavity. And we'll pull a vacuum on the outside of the tool and that will apply pressure to the inside. This is similar to the Easy Composites video where they make a hollow tube using a split mold and a vacuum bag on the inside outside. We'll still do the same trick where we have a 3D printed core, only this time the core will be hollow, except for the airfoil section. And that is to mainly to support the laminate during the layup process and give some place to put the uh, bladder, the bag here. That's, here's the part with the laminate shown wrapped around it. And here's the finished 3D printed core. And now I need to make the bladder, the vacuum bag bladder. I am aware that they they do make tubular vacuum bagging materials, but I wasn't able to source any. I haven't been able to find a source for that. Some place where you can buy a small quantity other than, you know, you'd have to order, special order it in bulk. So I know Easy Composite sells it in the UK, but I was looking for a supplier in the US. Haven't been able to find one, so if anybody, anybody knows, let me know. So instead I'm using a vacuum bag sealant tape to make my own tubular material. And then I cut it thinner so that the big bulky tape doesn't take up so much room inside the core of the part. Then let's just try stuffing it inside here and seeing how it goes. I'm kind of assuming this is going to work, but looking back now, I'm seeing all the problems, which you'll see later on that we eventually have with this. Here's the finished core. You can see it's quite rough, but that's okay. We don't care because it's gonna be on the inside of the part. And for the resin inlet hose, I put a little slit on the end so it'll sort of just sit here. It'll sort of sit on this wedge shape and the resin will flow on either side. And now it's time to painstakingly cut out a whole bunch of carbon fiber. And then again, painstakingly, we go through the same, basically the exact same layout process as the first part. And now it's time to insert the core. Again, this is pretty much the same as the first part, except we have the internal bladder, the internal vacuum bag sticking out of the top. Stir this up, actually. Oh, um, you yeah, get a little more life out of it. Yeah, there's, there's like... Un Here is the two-man mold closing action that I missed on the first part, in the video on the first part. You can see you can get it to stick down, and then we kind of just quickly close it and go, okay, good enough. Double-sided tape and stuff. Mm -hmm. so, so the exhaust port is a bit tricky because it has to go on the inside of the bladder or outside. I guess it depends on where you want to think of it from. But it is a little bit tricky to get that sealed up. Luckily, there's that's what a bunch of gum tape is for. And then the whole mold goes inside the vacuum bag. And the bladder has to have an air path to the outside of the vacuum bag. 
This again is a little bit tricky, especially with the exhaust tube coming out here. Uh, for more information on how this process works, definitely check out that Easy Composites video where they make this tube using this method. They have it, you know, it's through all the way, unlike our part, but the Easy Composites tutorial, obviously those guys are amazing and they do a much better job than I can do here. Tape a little bit longer. Okay, lots of vacuum bag sealant tape. Well, we get everything sealed up and looking pretty good. So we put the resin in the pressure pot, screw this thing together, and turn on the vacuum pump. But. You can't hear it here, but the pump actually turns on for like half a second and then completely dead. Vacuum pump died, uh, this part is ruined. So I just let the resin cure and this is how it looks coming out of the mold, which actually looks surprisingly good, but there's just not nearly enough resin to be a strong part. So we ordered a new vacuum pump. All right, okay. Good. New vacuum pump came in. We basically repeated the exact same process. Got the part in the mold in the vacuum bag, as you see, and we'll start drawing the uh, vacuum down. I guess it is. This took quite a bit of fiddling to get it to actually pull a vacuum down. You have a lot of a lot of areas where air can get in. It's very tricky to get this sealed up. And this is uh, part of the reason why this particular process is not quite ideal. And you'll see later on uh, where we, uh, we make it a lot better. However, we were able to eventually get it and uh, got the vacuum pulled down and now we're filling with resin. Almost right away, you can see we start having resin leaking out of the inlet side. And what seems to be happening here is the resin is flowing flowing on the outside of the mold into the breather cloth. Our main problem here is that we didn't seal up the inlet side of the mold. So the resin's gonna always, you know, find the path of least resistance to flow through. And as you can see, the breather cloth makes a pretty good uh, infusion mesh, basically. So the resin's flowing on the outside of the mold, not on the inside. Here we yeah, just have a, a huge bag of resin. I'm trying to just sort of knead yeah. it into the mold cavity. But we let it finish, we let it cure up, and uh, after painstakingly chiseling away resin on the outside, I was able to open the mold and look, well, let's see what we get. Well, all right. Looks like there's a part in there. There we go. All right. I think that's a successful part. So we got a pretty darn good looking and uh, quite functional part here. You can see it's not perfect on the inside. We wouldn't expect it to be, but it is mostly hollow like we were looking for. And it looks pretty good, much better than the first one, at least in terms of the mass of the part. And here you can see the big mess of leftover extra resin and consumables uh, that it took to get that out of the mold. <laughs> here we have like an outside part. <laughs> What a mess, but we got a part out of it, so that's the main thing. And here is the basically completed front assembly. We got the left and the right parts in the airfoil section. Looking pretty cool. Always fun to assemble when you get the parts to see how it looks all together 
in real life for the first time. Okay, that's it for this video. Here's a preview of the next one where we figure out how to do this without the vacuum bag. I see this is kind of the ultimate conclusion of this project of how to mold these parts. We got no vacuum bag, the thing's sealed up and we're infusing it right into the mold. This process is much cleaner, much neater, and really pretty sweet. So that'll be on part three of this video series. So be sure to subscribe, check that out. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys on the next one.